Today on this program you will hear gospel and rhythm and blues and jazz. All those are just labels. We know that music is music. With this passionate speech from Reverend Jesse Jackson opens Come Together, track number six on Primal Scream's seminal album, Screamadelica, and it manages to summarize the entire album. For Screamadelica is, in its essence, a celebration of music, a breaker of barriers, labels, and genres. By blending many conflicting styles like dub reggae, acid house, gospel and rock and roll, Primal Scream succeeded in creating a colorful cocktail of music and one of the defining albums of the 1990s. But what is the album really trying to say? And what can we learn from it today, more than 30 years after its release? Let's find out. Primal Scream saw its first rendition in 1982 when Glasgow school friends Bobby Gillespie and Jim Beatty got together to express themselves creatively in the only way they knew how, making noise by hitting garbage cans and screaming, quite literally living up to their band name. Around this time, apart from showcasing his drum skills on dustbins, Gillespie was also the drummer for Glasgow contemporaries The Jesus and Mary Chain, famously performing on their classic debut album Psycho Candy. Soon after the success of that album, Gillespie nevertheless chose to leave the band to focus solely on Primal Scream. After getting signed to the indie label Creation and recruiting musicians Robert Throb Young and Andrew Ines, The Scream put out their first couple of records in 1987 and 1989. Their debut, Sonic Flower Groove, a psychedelic 60s revivalist album a la The Birds. Up until this point, Primal Scream wasn't a band that hit home with the critics, and both these albums suffered unfavorable reviews. But in the end, one of the songs on their sophomore album would come to change the course of the band in the most unexpected way. In the late 80s, Acid House ruled the British underground, culminating in various mass raves around the country. The drug of choice, ecstasy, along with house music, created a romantic sense of community, empathy and togetherness within the movement, giving it the name The Second Summer of Love. Although Gillespie wasn't initially a fan of the music, he did enjoy the drug, and he was eventually worn down to liking the beats after his neighbor hosted frequent acid parties, playing various 12 inches. Getting more and more immersed in the rave scene, The Scream befriended Acid House DJ Andrew Weatherall and approached him to remix one of their songs, hoping that they'd maybe play it in the clubs they were going to. They gave him the song I'm Losing More Than I'll Ever Have, along with one single piece of direction. I did a version of it, a first version of it, which was just, just I just basically slung a kick drum underneath their original and because I was a little bit scared. I thought I thought they would be precious about their baby, about their artwork, you know. Um, did the version, Andrew Innes from the band came down, listened to it, he went, ah, it's not bad, but just f***ing destroy it. That was his words, just f***ing destroy it in a broad Glaswegian accent. You know, to have that said to you, it, it does, it is always, it's been ringing in my head for, for 20 years, him saying f***ing destroy it. So that... The visionary Weatherall ended up entirely stripping Gillespie's vocals, instead reworking the track around samples from the Emotions disco hit, I Don't Wanna Lose Your Love. A bootleg of Eddie Brickell's What I Am and the Peter Fonda movie, The Wild Angels. And we want to get loaded! Yeah! Thus, Loaded was born, and apart from becoming the band's first major hit, and an anthem for the E generation, it also became the spark that ignited the creative period leading up to Screamadelica. Making the songs that would become Screamadelica. Still fairly young guys in their late twenties, so life was good, you know. The acid house thing was still happening, and then we were listening to a you know, varied range of music: free jazz, psychedelia, funk, acid house, disco, soul, country, deep soul. You know, you name it. We were, you know, dub reggae. We were the 
immersing ourselves in that stuff. And uh, we had no families, maybe no girlfriends, we were just, you know, it was all about the art, all about the music, all about, you know, just living as an artist. After seeing the audience go mental for Loaded in the clubs, Primal Scream set out to write more songs intended to be remixed by Weatherall alongside producer Hugo Nicholson. What followed was an eclectic batch of singles that incorporated everything from dub to rock and roll, psychedelia and house. Most were produced by the duo Weatherall Nicholson, but the band also enlisted former Rolling Stones producer Jimmy Miller and Ambient House Pioneers The Orb. While Screamadelica is not traditionally viewed as a concept album, I honestly think that it should be. It may not have any cohesive narrative arc, but instead it's been argued that the album is the sonic representation of an ecstasy trip. And judging from the numerous references to drugs in the song titles, the dilated pupils of the sun on the iconic cover art, and lyrics like trip, trip, trip inside, and I'm coming down, I can't face the dawn. It's no secret that the drug heavily inspired the album. The overarching concept thus appears to be the story of somebody going to a rave, and musically I would say the album perfectly captures that ebb and flow of a night out. Take the first track, Moving On Up. A super uplifting song that just screams it's Friday and we're finally off from work after a long, hard week. We're having those first couple of drinks with our friends, feeling all the excitement of the weekend bubbling in our tummies. When Don't Fight It, Feel It comes around, we're starting to feel the effect of the drug. And as the title suggests, we embrace it. According to Gillespie, this track was even written at 6 in the morning, still up on an E. And who can resist that bouncing bass line and the amazing lead vocals from Denise Johnson? <laughs> Moving on to Come Together, a 10 minute epic of ever building organs and pure life affirming joy, encapsulated by the brilliant Jesse Jackson sample. At this point we're at the peak of the high, feeling ecstatic about everyone and everything. It's the moment when we free ourselves of all inhibition, rejoice, dance and come together as one. But sadly, everything that goes up must come down. And the album finishes with shine like stars. The party's over, the drugs are at the point of wearing off. And what encompasses a perfect night out turns out to be a quaint but beautiful accordion melody gently lulling us to sleep. I watch you sleep, you look so peaceful. You look so Screamadelica was finally released in September of 1991 to universal acclaim. The album has been credited for bridging the gap between rave and rock, reinventing band music and ultimately defining its era. It unexpectedly went on to win the first ever Mercury Music Prize, beating other big nominees such as U2, and was followed by a tour where the band famously set out to create the feeling of a rave instead of a rock show. On tour, the sudden rise in fame saw Primal Scream having everything they hadn't had before. Roadies, crew members, catering, all the alcohol they could drink and private drug dealers. Subsequently, they became rather infamous for their heavy drug use, still undeniably keeping with the spirit of the album. In the end, despite the decadence, Screamadelica will forever go down in history as a celebration of youth and the joys of music. To paraphrase producer Hugo Nicholson, the album managed altogether to tune into punk rock, ecstasy and the second summer of love, expressing both f*** this and f*** I love you so much at the same time. Screamadelica makes us trip, makes us dance, makes us rock and makes us scream for the weekend. It's a hymn of everybody coming together, forgetting our differences and surrendering to the rhythm of the beat. A positive message that we're sadly lacking in today's music industry and are sorely longing for again. Right now, I believe that a small dose of Screamadelica wouldn't hurt anyone. <laughs>